when we look to Luke 8, 21, uh, here is a situation where Jesus is preaching to multitudes and the mother and the brothers had come and the people are saying uh, in verse 21, uh, says, but he answered and said to them, my mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and do it. So it is when the people said, here is your mother, here are your brothers. Jesus is saying, my mother and my brothers are do these, looking at the people he's telling, these who hear the word of God and do it. So I, uh, within the week, I went around asking people, what do you understand from this? Hear the word of God, hear the word of God and do it. What exactly? I'm going to ask you here, but I would like in your heart to just consider what would you consider? Hear the word of God and do it because it's a so crucial matter because here Jesus is saying, ones who hear the word of God and do it are my brothers, my sisters. So uh, it's very important that we understand this particular part because when I asked, a lot of the people said, okay, hear the word of God and do it. First came the commandments, the law. What is the things that we had to do? And uh, some said, yeah, we need to uh, pray. We need to uh, do a lot of good work. We had to go to church. We need to serve God. And when we hear the word of God, we got to do it. So um, that is when, like, I mean, in uh, Luke 10, we see Jesus. Uh, there is a lawyer who is coming to Jesus. And asking, if I am to inherit the kingdom of God, what should I do? And then Jesus is asking, how is your reading on it? What do you understand of it? So Jesus is asking, okay. Then he goes on to explain uh, to love the Lord with all your heart. All that part comes out. So likewise, when Jesus speaks these words and say, my mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and do it, what's stirring in our hearts? Very important to understand that particular aspect of it. Uh, because my being a brother or a sister to Jesus is my being a son or a daughter to God. So um, then we um, look to what exactly, when we want to know something, sometimes when we go to think, our thinking is wicked because we are human beings. But when we want an answer to this question, we need to look to the Lord. Back again to the word of God. The word of God explains in John 6, 28 to 29. So uh, the story goes on. This is after Jesus uh, giving, uh, multiplying bread. And then here it is. The people are asking. Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? It's something like hear the word of God and do it. It's exactly hear the word of God and do it. If I go uh, earlier, what is it to hear the word of God and do it? Here is the people asking the same question we were thinking about now. What is it? What is it? And people are asking, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? And Jesus is saying, Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe him whom he sent. Believe him, that is believe Jesus, who God sent, whom he sent. So we see that comparison, hear the word of God and do it. What is it to work the works of God? And Jesus is answering simply. It's nothing about doing. It's the doing that is expected of us is believing him whom he sent. Believe in Jesus. These are the true brethren of Jesus. So the next question comes. What is it to believe? Again, I ask this question from the people. What is it to believe in Jesus? I'm a Christian. I go to church. I believe Jesus. I believe he's the son of God. Of course, even the evil spirits shout out saying, son of God. Everyone knows. One God we believe in. That's known. We believe that Jesus died. We believe that Jesus rose from the dead. We believe that Jesus took away our sin. We believe that we have been forgiven. We believe that 
uh, are, we are washed by the blood of Jesus. We are made righteous. We are holy. We sing. We are holy. We are righteous. We are washed by the blood of the Lamb. All that. But deep inside our hearts, we are wanting to do something to inherit the kingdom of God. We are trying to do something to inherit the kingdom of God. If this happens, we are not believing in Jesus. We could say, like Brother Shafi said, it's one thing to say it with the mouth, but it is to believe deep down in our hearts. When we say we believe in Jesus, we believe the Jesus left nothing undone for us to enter the kingdom of God. He has done everything. If I think of doing something to enter the kingdom of God, I fall short of being a believer. I become an unbeliever because I don't believe that Jesus has done it all. I always feel I need to do something about this. I need to do. What shall I do to inherit the kingdom of God? Just as that lawyer asked that question. Then we go to Mark 3.35. Here again, same story. Mark is now reporting. Earlier it was Luke reporting. Now Mark is reporting. So a multitude was sitting around him. Here 3.35 I'm specifying actually. But I'm coming from 32 where a multitude was sitting ar around him. And they asked, uh, then they said to him, look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But he answered them saying, who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked around in a circle at those who sat about him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. Now, we come to another question. What is the will of God? Because Jesus is saying, whoever does the will of God is my brother, my sister. I want to be Jesus' sister because then only I will be a daughter of God. That's a relationship because Jesus is the son of God. So now I need to find out what is the will of God? Because Jesus is saying, whoever does the will of God is my brother, my sister, and my mother. So I asked the people, what is the will of God? Again, it went round. Will of God is a whole lot of things were said. That he expects us to do this, to do that. A lot of the Martha story coming out, a lot of doing. People want to do a lot of things. Doing is the will of God. This is how it all came around. I'm telling, I did this search. I, did, I asked, but I'm not going to ask you. Again, within your hearts, search what is the answer that you would give. The will of God, very important, because those who do the will of God is the brother of Christ, is the sister of Christ. So again, thinking within our hearts is not going to find answers for the word of God. It's in the word of God. So we look back again to the word. John 6. And this is the will of him who sent me. That everyone who sees the son. And believes in him. May have eternal life. And will raise him. I, I will raise him up at the last day. That everyone who sees the son of God. And believes in him. Again same. Like see. Here again we saw, Jesus said, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. And again, here we see, everyone who sees the Son of God and believe in him. This is the will of him who sent me. This is the will of God who sent me. Whoever does the will of God, this is the will of him who sent me. So everyone who sees the Son and believes in him, yeah. So to believe in Jesus back again. That's these are the true brethren of Jesus. The word of God is not complicated, it's so simple, it's so simple, it's so beautifully coming together. We see in both the answer was the same to be the brother or sister. All what we have got to do is believe in Jesus, 
So we are going a little bit deeper to understand what is it to believe in him? Is it just, as I explained, just believing? Uh, Jesus died for me, took away my sin, but I had to do something. That if that yearning is there, I'm an unbelieving believer. I'm a mixed up. Lot of the, there are a lot of people who are mixed up, like the Nebuchadnezzar statue. It's made of gold, silver, bronze, iron, clay. Truth and the lie mixed together. A giant statue has come. So, but that's very dangerous. It went to chaff, it said. When it fell, when you read the book of Daniel, you see, it just went to dust. What is made of gold, silver, bronze, iron and clay went to dust. So if I believe in my heart, Jesus took away my sin, I'm a saint, I am a righteous person, holy, all that, I had to do something for me to enter the kingdom of God. To be another Martha or doer, doer, Lord, to say, Lord, Lord, I did this, I did that. Don't you know I did that? In your name, I did that. But God is saying, Jesus would say, away from me, I don't know you. Because there is no relationship. You, you are not my brother. You are not my sister. You have done this. You have even raised the dead. But you are not my sister. You are not my brother. Why? Because in my heart, I have been always wanting to do something to enter the kingdom of God. Not accepting, believing 100%. He has done it. He has not kept anything undone for me to do. Now, let's see one more. Very interesting. What about Jesus' own brothers? John 7, 5 says, For even his brothers did not believe in him. So, they could be the biological brothers, but they are not the true brothers in Jesus' eyes. I see myself in my flesh, but Jesus sees deep into my heart, spiritually. So, this is where... Namesake believers, namesake Christians, namesake born again Christians, but not the children, not the sons and daughters of God. Namesake brothers, now these are, they think we are Jesus' brothers. But Jesus says, my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it, those who do the will of God. And we learned it. And uh, going a little bit deeper onto the who be, about believing, because this believing is very crucial. Um, so uh, John 6, 36 says, but I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. So there are so many people even at that time who had seen Jesus, yet do not believe. John 6, 64, but there are some of you who do not believe. There are some of you among, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. So Judas was all around him, going around from day one. But in his heart, he never could understand that Jesus took even his sin on the cross and paid the penalty for it. He kept it with him. He condemned himself. The devil condemned himself. Satan did the work and he himself condemned Judas and Judas was condemned in her, his heart. He could not understand. I have my redemption through Jesus. He could not believe. He was a person who could not believe. There's no difference in the offense that was done between Peter. But Peter heard the word of God, heard, understood that he is forgiven. So we move on. Uh, John 5.38 says, But you do not have his word abiding in you, because whom he sent, him do, you do not believe. So the, the word, when the word is abiding in our hearts, the faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God. So the faith comes to believe by hearing the word, when the word abides in you. It 
comes. The repentance, when the repentance is established in our heart, faith rises like a gift through the grace of God for us to have the ability to have the word abiding in us. John 8, 43 to 45 says, why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are uh, you are of the of uh, you are of your father the devil and the desires of your father you do you you want to do he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaks a lie he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it see when the truth is not there not able to understand it so a lot of the people could not understand. They were wanting to stone Jesus. So angry with him because the, the truth was not in them. And then we also see, but because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. So for the people who are perishing, the message of the cross is uh, it's, it's, it's uh, for the people who are perishing. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So in that is in 1 uh, Corinthians 1.18. So likewise, when the truth is spoken, he's the way, the truth, the life. When the truth is spoken, they could not understand because their father was different. Their father is the devil, where the truth is not in them. And we also see uh, in Galatians 4.16, people hated Paul. There were people who hated Paul because the truth was not in them. Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Paul asked. When the book, you read the book of Galatians, you see the heartache with which he is speaking. So many of such words. You also see John 8.24, Therefore I say to you that you will die in your sins. But if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. What happens here? This is a very profound uh, word because we see if I believe that my sin is not taken by Jesus, my sin remains with me. When I die, I die with my sin. So when I die with my sin, where do I go? I go to hell. I'm cut off from the kingdom of God. So if I can't believe that Jesus has done it all, only Jesus can do it and he has done it all, the sin remains with me. That is why it says, therefore I say to you, Jesus is saying these words, therefore I say to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. In John 8, 28 says, then I, I just want to bring out, I am he. If we, we can't understand, I am he. That's very crucial. Then Jesus said to them, when you lift up the son of man, then you will know that I am he. John 3, 14 to 15, we know. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, we learned, when you lift, lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he. Now, when will we know that about Jesus? When we lift him up. What is it to lift him up? To believe. Whoever believes in him, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him. So when we believe with all our heart, Jesus has done it all for me. He has not kept anything undone for me to do. If I am to do anything, there won't be a single human being entering the kingdom of God. Because we human beings are wicked and are so un unable to do anything. So if ever we are to do a single minute thing that is required for us to enter the kingdom of God, no one will ever make it. But he has done it all. So that is the moment we lift up. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. To know that I am he. 
Isaiah 45:22 says, "Look to me and be saved." Then Isaiah uh, John 4:26 says, "Jesus said to her, 'I who speak to you am He.'" We know this story. This is where the woman of Samaria. She was somewhat like a harlot, but she believed. When the Pharisees could not believe, and the Pharisees died in their sins, but here is a woman condemned. But here she believed I, that Jesus is He. John five eight three fifty eight says, Jesus said to them, "Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am." So this is where. Rising from John eight twenty four, what I wanted to bring out mainly was John eight twenty four. Therefore, I say to you that you will die in your sins. But if you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. Very powerful words uh, from Jesus. Then we also see uh, what is it that Jesus has done for me. Let's look at that. Colossians one thirteen to fourteen, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. He has delivered us. What more? He has delivered us. In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He has done it. Romans three twenty four, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We have been justified by His grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, one Corinthians six eleven says, "And such were some of you." Actually, uh, Romans three twenty three also is bad news. Twenty four is good news because twenty three says, "All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God." And I put the good news part only here, but being justified. Even so, one Corinthians six ten up you see. You were this, you were that. All kind of everything is mentioned there. And Levin says, and such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. So Jesus has done it all. Colossians two thirty, and you being dead in your trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh. He has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, all trespasses. If the word of God says, "All my sins are washed away," all my sins are washed away. Not what I think, but not what I feel, not what the Satan is telling me. No, 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 no. What you did in the morning, just now, or just a while ago, can't you remember? Ah, no. All the word says all. And Isaiah forty four twenty two. Only on this verse, the message of salvation can be preached entirely. I have blotted out like a thick cloud your transgressions, and like a cloud your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. He has redeemed us. It's a matter of just returning, not asking what should I do to inherit the kingdom of God. There is nothing I can do. Other than to believe, Hebrews two fourteen to fifteen. In as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who him Satan who had the power of death, that is the devil. So and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime. Subject to bondage, so all the fear is gone. The fear of death is gone. No more sin. Fear of sin is gone. Uh, the fear of eternal death, condemnation is gone. All their life, the bondage is gone. Redeemed. Two Corinthians three seventeen. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Freedom. John eight thirty six. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Just to 
understand from all the other verses that are there in the Bible, Jesus has done it all. John 6, 47, most assuredly, when Jesus says most assuredly, what more? Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. Just believe. Just simply, simply like a child believe. He has done it. And Jesus is telling most assuredly. What more assurance? John 7, 38. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So what is that scripture verse? He referred to Isaiah 12, 3. Wells of salvation. What is he referring to? The Holy Spirit. When we believe in Jesus, by the grace of God, through faith, gift of the Holy Spirit is given to us. Holy Spirit is a gift given to us that will teach us how to walk through, how to hold on to and come through because he is the gift. He is the guarantee of our salvation. He is the one who witnesses of our salvation. Hebrews 2, 11 says, for both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all one. For which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Jesus is not ashamed to call us brethren. Why? He who sanctifies, Jesus who sanctified, and those who are being sanctified, all of us here. Jesus is not ashamed to call us brethren. I know once uh, in this meeting, one brother was saying, how wonderful when we enter heaven, though we are speaking to each other on Zoom, we may not meet each other in our lifetime here on earth because we are coming together from various parts of the world. But one day, we will rejoice together in heaven as the children of God, brethren. We will be each one of us brethren and we have Jesus who is not ashamed to call us brethren. How wonderful it is. And uh, we also see in Galatians 2.16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. So we know, do, 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 doing thing. If I try to do something on my own to go to heaven, it's like I'm going through the back gate, like a robe. The thief only enters through the back gate. The way to go is through Jesus. And he has done it. Uh, so uh, Hebrews 10, 26 says, if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. So what is the knowledge of the truth? To know that the Lord has once died for us, once taken up our sins and died once for our sins and brought about our redemption once. And we are being sanctified, we are being redeemed, we are made righteous. But if we, having understood this truth, if we go by our sin, what is the sin? Our own thoughts to say, no, no, wait a minute, what about my sin? And hold on to my sin and think, I need to now do something about the sin. But if we sin willfully, once we come to the knowledge of the truth, understanding the word of God, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. This is the sin that cannot be pardoned. Unpardonable sin against the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is a guarantee of our salvation. But we say, no, my sin is with me. I am a sinner. I go and tell, Lord, this is, I am a sinner. I come and give you my sin today. Forgive me, Lord. Tomorrow I go again. Day after I go again. I'm a sinner, Lord. I'm a sinner. 
and i i think it's very good to say i am a sinner cry uh, and go that is unbelief unable to believe that i am made righteous but there is a sense of holiness that is created by the people when you cry cry and say lord i am a sinner i am a sinner i am witnessing against the holy spirit who witnesses to say that you are being redeemed so if i witness against the holy spirit there is it is unforgivable no longer remains a sacrifice for sins hebrews 10:29 of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy to trample the son of god under foot counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace so common thing yesterday today tomorrow day after every day calling myself a sinner taking my sins telling jesus wash me every day without believing jesus has done it now i need to live as a grateful with a grateful heart unto the lord worthy of the gospel it is no longer i but christ who lives in me it uh, to live with christ to die is gain with that understanding then victoriously more than conquerors we are able to move and tell the good news of salvation to the people and say know what the lord has done for you we have the confidence in the in the lord and we can declare the gospel of jesus christ and uh, we know hebrews 4 2 to 3 why is it that we now we know the word we are to hear the word of god not to be only uh, hearers but doers of the word now we heard what it is to hear the word of god and do it and what is the problem in the people who hear and not believe it is unprofitable if we hear the word of god when we come to the knowledge of the truth but if we don't mix what we hear with faith if we don't mix what we hear with faith it is unprofitable it makes it's useless so this is what hebrews 4 2 to 3 says for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them so the author of hebrews is writing here the gospel they heard those people who heard it but the word which they heard did not profit them not being mixed with faith in those who heard it this is where those who hear the word of god and do it be the not only hearers but doers of the word so to hear the word it has to be then believe in it believe it is done so mixing without it it's not going to profit for we who have believed do enter that rest as he has said so i swear so in my wrath that uh, they shall not enter my rest although the works were finished from the foundation of the world for we who have believed do enter that rest nothing for me to do gratefully live worthy of the gospel by the power of the holy spirit declaring the gospel as a more than a conqueror truly a good news to declare so i enter the rest for we who have believed do enter that rest as he has said so i swore in my wrath that they shall not enter my rest although the works were finished from the foundation of the world work is done but to us who believe we know we enter that rest hebrews 4:10 says for he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as god did from his so we rest in jesus we enter the lord of the sabbath is our lord we enter 
because we believe he has done it left nothing undone for me to do for me to enter the kingdom of god so finally it's like a child that we need to enter because uh, jesus said unless you become like a child you cannot enter the kingdom of god because we need to forsake our thinking receive the word of god in faith and believe what the lord has done for us knowing that i don't have to do anything jesus has done everything for me there is nothing left for me to do other than believe in what he has done and live for christ with utmost gratefulness for what he has done with this i will close